And so we go again. Good morning to you, Lagos. Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, wherever you may be hearing us from. Um, even up to the far-flung corners of the world. Let me say welcome to this show. I have a friend and brother who knows something about being in some of those far-flung corners of the world. <laughs> My name is Femi Obong Daniels. Please meet co-anchor Dr. Weber Boer. How are you doing, Weber? I'm good. Good morning, Femi. I, I saw the photos on Instagram of your 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 baby uh, Cairo. He's I can't believe he's three months already. That was I like yesterday you. that he was born. I tell you, right? I, you know, I, even I can't believe it myself, and it keeps um, stretching every day. The new one now is that he likes to just literally. Maybe it's his idea of singing. He, you can't keep him quiet anymore, so he's constantly making these sounds like like music in in his mind. But it's just. You know, it's just, it's just the beauty of it. Uh, but I saw him in the, in the Manchester United kit, so it looks like your wife has won on this one. Yes, um, it's a racket she's running. Um, <laughs> but it's not new. She's, she's tried it with all the okay. other kids. Uh, okay. You know, I, I'm it just... Doesn't last. I'm letting, last. I'm letting it... Okay. I'm just letting it happen. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. All right great. Welcome to the show. This is COVID-19 Heroes. And what a ride we have had. Um, you know what they say, can anything good come out of Bethlehem? Well, the coronavirus gave us heartbreak and despair. Somehow, though, with it came some um, great positives. Some individuals rose up to the challenge and um, decided to say, we are not going to be put down. We are not going to be defeated by this virus. And these ones have become heroes of a very dark, bleak period. And one other thing this period has given us is the COVID-19 Heroes show itself, which is gradually, gradually winding down as hopefully we begin to return to you know, some form of normality. Welcome to the show. And um, uh, we have a, a hero, a, another hero on the show today. As is customary, well, Weber does us the honors. All right, thanks, Femi. So this morning we have Doyen Shola Ogunye. She's the founder of the Mental and Environmental Development Initiative for Children, known as Medic Nigeria. So good morning, Doyen Shola, and thank you so much for coming on the show. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. And sorry that Femi and I banter so much that we, 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 we take all your time, but, but we'll, we'll try and jump into it now. <laughs> Femi just can't stop talking, you know. So, um, so look, if you can kick off by telling us about yourself, um, your professional background, and how your passion for development work like this started. Because you were doing this long before COVID, so it would be good to hear how that all started. Okay, thank you so much. Um, first of all, my name is Doyin Sola born and raised in Lagos. I'm from Ondo State. Um, I'm a lawyer um, and also, um, what else? I love the environment. Now, the question is, how did this all start? We used to live, my family and I used to live in one part of Vegas State. And after a while, I think in the year 2020, we moved to another area of Lagos, which was not as clean and as tidy as the area I was coming from, the area I grew up in. And, you know, I saw a lot of children, you know, running down the streets, you know, it, it was not something I was used to. So I said to myself, well, what can I do, you know, about this? So I started reaching out to people, friends, you know, elders in, in the community and things like that. But nobody really took me seriously until I started talking to the kids. And, you know, we we'll play a lot of environmental games. I'll tell them to recycle, which they would do. And it was in their formative years. And I said to myself, you know, if we start teaching children now, it will be it will be a better future for all of us because they will be used to cleaning. They'll be used to recycling and things like that. So we started going to schools. We started going to churches. We started going to, you know, different institutions. We started getting sponsorship. You know, people started, you know, donating to us, seeing that, you know, there was an impact in, in the environment. You know, parents started paying attention. And, you know, like they always say, the rest is history. And that we're here now. Oh, all right, doing So tell us about your organization, Mental and Environmental Development Initiative for Children, MEDIC. I like the acronym, by the way. It started in 2014, didn't it? Um, so let's know how it started, the idea behind it, and how it, it, it evolved 
um, during this pandemic period? Okay, it actually started in 2011. Oh. Uh, a few years before. And a few years before that, in 2009, I started something called the Kids Clean Club. Mm. You know, so I would take children, you know, you know, put them in different teams and, and we just started the club. And um, children would clean the environment, recycle, they get benefits, take them to radio and things like that. So at this point, I was still in school, still in university, and I wanted to register the organization. So I wanted to register it as Kids Clean Club. And, you know, with the CSC, they were like, no, this name can't go, this name can't go, this name can't go. And I, I was really, really frustrated by that. So I said, okay, what do I do? So I went, I, I had a conversation with my mentor, who was also the lawyer helping me. And he said, okay, Dr. Sola, what are the three things that come to mind when you think about the club? And I said, mental development, environmental development for children, for the benefit of children. So that's how we're able to, you know, crystallize that name and, you know, put it forward and the name came through. Now, the beauty about that is all other initiatives that, because Medic is basically initiative based so we think up initiatives that would be good for the environment and that will actually help children or vice versa mm -hmm. and then we, we, we take action so the beauty about that now is we now have several initiatives that are under the umbrella of medic nigeria which is totally amazing mm. so let's let's dig into that a little bit can you tell us a little bit about some of those initiatives uh, for children over the years and then with a particular focus on specific impact stories like children who went through your programs and how it changed their lives okay i would start with kids can club because that was basically what birthed everything that we have now and kids clean club started in 2009 and this is 2020 so it's about 11 years you know so i have children that started at age nine at age 10 at age five you know way back then and i see how it um you know they're leaders in their fields now i see how they're you know they're different you know they do things differently you know children that we started with have already started their own initiatives as well really small you know by the way but you know they have that background and that's what i want to see i want to see more of that you know we have people like um um Usman, you know, doing things in his school. We have people like Marvelous. He's in Unilag. He, you know, he volunteers all the time, you know, reaching out, you know, and they're very big on social media. You know, this generation, they're actually better than all of us on social media, you know. So you see them push initiatives on social media. You see them, you know, get recognized internationally, you know, for the work that they have been doing, you know. So when you put their pictures, you know, when they were like really tiny and now that they're really big and you put it together, it actually inspires more people to do more things for the environment, especially in Nigeria. So let's come to um, COVID-19, which has disrupted the amazing work organizations like yours do. Um, so tell us how it really affected your work, you know, looking at how many people depend on it and how you have adapted to the situation. Well, it's been bittersweet. Like, I can't talk about this without having a smile on my face mm. because COVID, it's, you know, it's affected people in different ways. But what I would always like to say is you have to choose how it affects you. You know, I, I have I have gone through a lot during this period, but at the same time, so many beautiful opportunities have, all, have also opened up. You know, so like I've said before, most of the things we've been doing, with um you know in the environment you know recycling tree planting and you know things like that but now everybody just wants to survive like nobody's thinking about recycling nobody's thinking about you know the trees and everything at this point we were able to in one month we started seven initiatives and we did everything in one month. We got partners, we were able to give up palliatives, we we're able to help nursing mothers, we we're able to give water, we we're able to you know, give financial support. And even with the women, because we have a, a group of women called them Reswaye Women, that's the recycling scheme for women in youth empowerment. That's also under the medic umbrella. You know, there were no jobs for them to do. The only thing they were able to do was to clean the environment. And every time they recycle, they get paid for it. You 
you know so things like that actually encourage them to actually do more in the environment it actually encouraged them to you know give back you know so at the end of the day the environment is getting cleaner they're actually getting you know empowered by it and you know everybody's happy you know so at the same time when you know everybody said oh covid is this covid is that you know they were it opened more doors for me especially when it comes to water i had never ever really you know done a lot of work and a lot of research you know with water in nigeria up until now so let's let's get into that so you started the COVID-19 water challenge for communities. And there's some, some videos of that that are all over the social media and so on. Um, and it's not just kids. I mean, there's some, some elderly people obviously on it who are very, very grateful and so on. So how did that yeah. challenge start and, and who are some of the beneficiaries? Okay. Um, it started basically, there's this particular, uh, you know, um, commercial or jingle that goes on with COVID and it says, oh, you have to wash your hand for 20 seconds, you know, preventive measures, basically. You have to wash your hands for 20 seconds under running water. And that is actually a lot for some people. First of all, washing their hands under running water for 20 seconds is almost like they're wasting water because water is really, really, really expensive, you know, you know, for, for these people. And um, I, st I stumbled upon a, a video, very disgusting, I must say, where, you know, some people were washing their hands and after washing their hands, they would now drink the water. I don't know if you ever saw that. Unfortunately, I did. I can't unsee it. Exactly, exactly. So it really, really messed up my mind and I'm like, wow. They can't even afford drinking water. So they have basic, uh, is, I don't even want to go. Please, if you've not seen it, please try not to see it because mm. it really, really mess up your mind. Well, except so I said to myself, going to go look for it. True, <laughs> 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 exactly. So it bothered me for so long. And I started asking that it can't be that bad now. That why, why this? You know, so I started asking, you know, how much is water? you know, which is, you know, the, the sachet water is actually 10 naira. I didn't even know that. If you want the cold one, it's 20 naira. And I was just like, oh my God, this thing is so expensive. Mm. And started asking, you know, for portable water, because there are some places in, in Lagos where you can't even drill boreholes because the water is really bad. So people buy water. And then, you know, for a small 20 liter keg, you, I think it's about 70 naira, you know, which is almost, it's, over triple the price of what we actually, you know, buy water for people that buy water. And I said to myself that, you know, this is really, really bad. You know, there's so many people giving palliative, but you know, if you give me rice, I still have to cook the rice anyway, so I need water. If you give me anything, I still need water. You know, for me, I feel water is even more important, you know, than food in some cases, because even if you give me food, I still need to drink water. So I said like to my Like Pelasa, okay. water, you no get enemy. Mm -hmm. You no get enemy <laughs> at all. I no get enemy at all. Water is life, mm. you know. Oh, so, so that was, it got me thinking. I partnered with, with somebody, um, Rector Cares Foundation, and then we started to do our research. We started going to these communities that, okay, this water, what kind of water do you want? But, you know, everybody was like, okay, dispenser water, pure water, everyone, just give us, you know, water. You know, so we went back, started asking people, donors, funders, everybody, everybody just joined the conversation and everything happened on social media. It, it was very powerful. Every single thing happened on social media. So we decided to have a storage facility with um, 8,000 liter tanks, you know, so we put the tanks in the community. 8,000 liters and then we got them water, you know, for the first three weeks, we got donors to actually buy water, you know, for these communities, safe water for drinking and for cooking, because most of these communities, they have wells and they have other, you know, but for clean water, you know, I always say that you don't want to move from treating Corona to treating cholera if you don't have good water, mm. you know, so started, you know, we started to build a platform, we started to get the tanks and everything. So we're able to do it for one community. And it was, it was beautiful. It, it was really, really beautiful. I can't, I can't wait to share the videos and pictures online on how happy these people were, how happy the children were. Because to even get the water to them, mm. we, we had to build, and before they could get water, before they had access to water, they had to go really, really far. 
you know, to get the water that was actually triple the price. Now, the next question was, how do we sustain it? You know, we have donor fatigue. We have, you know, it's not every time people have the opportunity to give. So we now introduced the recycling, which was already there. So mm -hmm. we said, okay, the more you recycle, you can actually sell your recyclables and then we get water into the tanks. So that's basically where we are now. The community is cleaner and then we're able to use the funds from the recycling to buy water for them. So we know water is a problem in the country. Uh, in fact, UNICEF ranks Nigeria as one of the top three countries in the world with the highest number of people living without access to safe water and sanitation. The question is, why? From your work and experience, why is this a big problem for Nigeria? And also, how has COVID made the problem even more acute? Um, I would say everything starts with the mindset. And um, the story, our story, you know, the COVID-19 water challenge story is very different. It's very different because I haven't even seen anything like it. Because um, Lagos has so much waste. And Lagos is actually surrounded by the by water, the lagoon, and the ocean. So Nigeria also has a lot of you know waterways, water bodies around. But people need to know that they can do things differently. You know, if you recycle, for example, you're taking out your waste, and then you can actually get something for it, which is for me for the COVID nineteen water challenge, which is water. So. The more we do things innovatively, you know, the more we think outside the box, we can actually do better, you know, for water and also sanitation. Because the, the truth is the COVID-19 water challenge has actually answered those two questions, water and sanitation. So tell us also about your food and medical outreach. Uh, we understand that beyond water, you also were able to provide food, medical supplies and so on for some of these communities. So, how, you know, how did that work and, and how was all of this funded? um partnerships 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 and everything because we couldn't move around a lot during the lockdown uh, my organization had the you know opportunity to have a pass because we were doing a lot of work in the, during the lockdown you know so we had a pass from the lagos state government to move around but everything was done online you know so we're able to fund it by donations from in and out of the country and um, we're able to get partners in different fields for example we partnered with um, um the fola david foundation for the medical because i'm not I'm, I'm i'm trained as a lawyer so i don't do anything medical like that but we're able to get them on board we're able to get other organizations on board we're able to even do some sort of education now especially when the lockdown started to ease we wanted to know what the children knew and what they didn't know, especially in the in the villages, because most of the children in um, in the in the city they were able to learn online. You know, the children out there they didn't have that opportunity. So we did, you know, the educational outreach. We did uh, medical. We did financial. We did we, we did about seven, and it all was based on partnerships and social media. So interesting. How about uh, partnership with government? Do you have any government partnerships? Um, right now, we we don't have. We have a lot of recognition and endorsement from the government, um, Lagos State Waste Management Authority, that which is a um, LOMA. We we have um, a lot of recognition from them. From LASPAC, we do as well. Um, but but with partnerships, we don't have any yet. So then tell us about some of the other projects your organization is currently working on. You have things on environmental protection, um, something around nursing mothers, education. W w w tell us a bit more about these and then how are they connected or at all to your COVID uh, interventions? Okay, the reason why I, I spread the tentacles even more because I realized that if you solve one problem and you have not solved the other problem, you've really not done, you know, holistically, you've, you've not done, not helped, you know, as much as you could. So I said, instead of just going, because we're very big on the environment, but, you know, in Lagos State, especially with the COVID, you're telling me to clean my environment and, you know, I never told, I tell me to clean the environment. It can't really work, you know, and even if you don't chop, I mean, you've eaten, but you're not healthy or you don't know how to 
prevent the, the coronavirus, we've still not done much. So I said, instead of just going into the community for one, why don't we do as many things as possible, partnering with people, you know, that are passionate about these things as well, and take care of these communities. You know, all in all, we reached out to about 12 communities, looking at the needs of each community. Some communities had more pregnant women than they had um, of children. You know, some communities, you know, were really, really broke because they were fishing communities, and, and um, these fishing communities, they were, it's either they had the fish and because they couldn't move around, the fishes would die, or they had the fish and they couldn't sell it because there was nobody to buy it. You know, so to different. Um, different um communities had different needs so we're able to meet them at their point of needs all right um the last question i would like to ask you is having done this much and i'm a, i'm sure that many of these youngsters you've helped in the past you've already mentioned one or two um they you know in growing up they are then uh, making their services available they are volunteering to the cause and assisting you some people are listening now and saying, oh, I like what this lady is doing. I would like to be a part of it. I would like to support it. How can listeners volunteer with your organization? And how just can they find you? Um, we're really, really big on social media. And we, we focus on that because everybody's there. You know, the governments, the international organizations, friends, family, young and old people on social media so on social media it's medic nigeria and kids clean club we also have kids beach garden so most of our activities are on that platform um the website is www.medicng.org all right okay maybe you can repeat all of those again just once so people can catch that Okay, so we have Medic NG on social media. That's your Facebook, Twitter, your Instagram, and all that. We have the Kids Clean Club. Also have the Kids Beach Garden. And if you go on any of those platforms, you would see all the others because it's Medic is a gift that keeps on giving. So we always have initiatives that we're working with. We also have the website, which is www.medicng.org. And um, email, contact us at medicng.org. So we've been looking right, at... So, okay, go ahead. So Femi, can I ask, one, can I ask my final question? So my Please final go ahead. question then was yeah. the flip side of that. How do communities reach out who need help? How do they... I guess through the same through the same mechanism. Um, most because in all communities that we're working with now, we have women leaders, we have the male leaders, we, we have leadership training for them, we have trained the trainer. So some of the other communities around them reach out to them, and then they reach out to us. They, okay, this, okay. If you're going to spread, these are all the communities that we want you to work with. Okay, so okay. it's organic. Mm. Okay. It's been a pleasure talking to you. We've been looking at providing access to clean and portable water for vulnerable communities. And our guest this morning has been the young, hardworking Doin Sola Ogunye. Uh, she's founder Medic Nigeria. Uh, and um, Doin, such a fine, fine pleasure to have you join us. You are a hero. And, and I'm sure the kids agree with me, particularly those ones whom you've touched um, on you know on personal levels uh well done for the hard work you do do not tire out do not relent um because the kids are coming yeah uh, maybe <laughs> one day Cairo, Cairo will need you uh <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's the show thank you very much doing uh what do we have next week um Weaver well uh we're, we're juggling a couple of guests so I can't yet confirm who's on for next week uh mm -hmm. but but it'll be a good one, trust me. All right. On behalf of our superhero today, um, uh, Doin Sola Ogunye, uh, and the rest of the, uh, the team, the COVID-19 COVID Heroes team, join us again, same time, next Wednesday. It's 11.30. You don't want to miss it. Until that time, do enjoy the rest of your week. And as we always say, stay safe. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We'll be right back.